Yeah, so I'm gonna go over some Python stuff for you guys. Make sure you yeah. speak, speak loud and make sure you speak towards the mic. Alright, uh, sure uh, 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 yeah. So so programming is basically just uh, how you talk to the machine, like the computer. So all you do is just uh, you type in some command and the computer will do the rest for you. So the the reason it's really convenient is that you can do like lots of repetitive repetitive stuff in just a two lines of code. I mean if you do that those things manually, you probably need to like click the mouse for like one one hundred of times. And also other things is that the computer can do the computation for you. Like it's, you can consider it as a calculator plus a robot. And yeah. So how Python works in Maya is that, so basically everything you do in Maya can be translated into a mail code or, and the mail code will do the actual thing inside Maya. And uh, so, and uh, Maya has a Python library. Basically, it can translate each of the mail code to a corresponding Python code. Yeah. What's the mail? Mail, yeah, mail is, mail is a script for Maya. It's like the built-in stuff. That's how, I think the way Maya works is that, so everything you do can be translated into Maya, mail, and the mail will be compiled to C. That's and then C will run the like bottom level computer science stuff. Yeah. And uh, so first, I will introduce the idea of data for you guys. So data is lots of things, and uh, so everything in coding and computer is binary. So it's either zero or one. And this binary thing will be like, so those are numbers. And the numbers can be represented as like the numbers we're used to, like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, that kind of things. Uh, so for, there are like different types of data. So one type of data, so everything, every types of data, like intrinsically it's just a binary numbers but like since we're using a higher level language like python so the data is of different types so one one type is integer so just so what it is like zero one two three four no points like straight numbers and uh, the second type is float so float is just uh, like 1.2 and 1.3. So remember in computer science, like 1.0 and 1 are different things. Though they have the different value, uh, they have the same value in Python, but they are treated differently in Python. Like for example, So this line of code means like five divided by two. So if you do five divided by two, it's gonna give you some number like two. Uh, it's like right here. This is the result of this thing. Because those are integers, when you are doing the division, that kind of calculation, it's gonna like uh, automatically be rounded to two. But if you do five points, zero divided by two, it's going to give you 2.5. So uh, that's like all you need to understand about like float and the integer for now. So they are like different things. And the third type is bool. Bool is like true and false. So true is one and false is zero. So Uh, how to 
you can think about it. You can just uh, think true. Yeah, that's that's basically it. True is like, yes, it is true, and it's li it's literal, like what it means. And false, it just is wrong, and not wrong. I, it's just uh, not true. Yeah. So if you. So here, oh, those two equations getting together means like you are evaluating whether they are equal to each other. You guys can, can you guys understand what I'm saying right now? Yeah, so it's trying to say whether true is equals to one and it, it gives us back like a value true. So it means like true equals to one. And uh, if we do like if true equals equal to zero, it's gonna give us something like false. And if we do like false equals double equals to zero, it's true because like false is equal to zero. It's a bit confusing, but you guys get it. It's kind of like, yeah. All right, so, and uh, another very important data type is array. And you can also call it list or whatever, like just a bunch of data getting together into like one type of data. Basically, you can consider it as some sort of container that's filled with like tons of data and it's indexed. So basically, if we have like an array, like one, two, three, four, the way to access one, uh, I don't think, yeah, just to keep that in mind for now, we'll like come back to the array later. And uh, the, another data type is string. So string is just uh, like the words we're speaking. Like, so like, uh, I'll say that it's, yeah, I spent some time understanding all of those concepts. So it's really hard to put those in English and uh, so what we can see is like, if we put like a quotation mark on that and say, hello, that's basically a string. It's another string. Like basically everything in the quotation marks is a string. And uh, even like, remember we were talking about the integer and the floats. So if you have a, like an integer inside the like quotation marks, it's a string. It's not a like integer anymore. So if we do like, if the thing equals to that, it's false. Because like we can think about like integer as actual numbers, but string as like, if I say one, that one is a string. Like it's like the word I'm saying, but like integer is a, like the, the real number in the computer in, in, inside the computer, inside the machine. So does that kind of make sense to you? Yeah, just a, you can ask me questions anytime because it's like super confusing stuff. And I don't think I'm really good at explaining things. So after the data types, so in the, so in the computer, we have to have some sort of way to access all those data so basically we, we can put those data in the variables or we can say we give those data some temporary names. Yeah, so, yeah, so variable is like the, the name we're assigned to the data. Like we can call say an integer one. Uh, we can give an, so if we have one here and uh, because if it's one, there's we we need to put that one in somewhere so we can access one like later, and uh, maybe like two lines of code later or three lines of code later if we want to use it repetitively. So if we do a equals one, basically now the one the value one is stored in the variable a, and uh, if we do a equal equals to one, so it's true. And uh, so I was saying that array is like a container, you can put a bunch of data inside it. Like variable 
it's like a total different concepts, but you can also think about it like if we have a data, we have to put it somewhere and like give it a name and we can use that later. It's like sort of, it's not similar because it's really confusing if I say that, but just uh, like, yeah. And we can assign different values to the same variable. It's going to be overwritten. Like so the variable, the value in the variable is going to be like the latest uh, thing we are assigned to. Uh, we can do like a equals two. Oh yeah. So if you use like a equation, I mean, e how to say how to say the symbols equation mark or equal sign. oh yeah equal sign yeah yeah yeah. So if we use one equal sign, it means we are assigning two into this variable a. So right now, if we print a, it's gonna be two instead of one because like. The latest code we're using is like a equals to one. Uh, a equals to two. Yeah, and we can do like b equals to two as well. And now like the b is two. And if we do a, if we are asking the computer whether a equals to two, it's gonna give us yeah they are like because they have the same value. Does that make sense? Yeah. If, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, because I, I don't think I have enough material to cover for one and a half an hour. And we, I have lots of examples if you, do, you guys do not have examples there. So it's just so like you can ask me a question anytime. Yeah. Okay, uh, and yeah, so those are like the examples of variables. We can assign any kind of data into a variable. Like we can assign a string to a variable and we can assign like an array into a variable. It's just a basically like how we can go back to access those data later. Oh, yeah, so another thing is like if we say C equals to two and then we say D equals to C. At this time, D is going to have the value 2. Does that make sense? Right. OK. Um, yeah, so I was mentioning the like two equal signs together. means like it's evaluating whether they are equal to each other. And there are like other similar kind of things. Like if we do 1 is greater than 0, yeah, it's true. It's like also trying to evaluate whether like one is greater than zero. And uh, similarly, it's like if you if we do greater or equal, it's just uh, like whether this thing, whether one is greater or equals to two, is it to zero, yeah. And the one other thing is like if you have a x x what is it? What's it called again? Like, yeah, explanation point and the uh, equal sign together. It means whether they are not equal to each other. So it's like the opposite of two equal signs. Yeah. So if we trying to try to evaluate whether one does not equal to zero, and yes, they are not equal to each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I mentioned this before. Yeah. Another thing about like the, the the data type, we can like cast one kind of data to another kind of data in Python. So if we do int 5.0, uh, mm, I forgot the syntax. Uh, yeah, so if we do like, the type of another kind of data and then trying to cast the flow, yeah. Int? Yeah, int is an integer, yeah. And the uh, float is a float. And the bool is a boolean. And the string is a string, yeah. And uh, if we cast like something, yeah, if we do this, it's gonna make the
Yeah, so if we do stir, stir a string, it's gonna it's not casting the five to five point zero to an, the same value in the string. Instead, it just uh, makes the five point zero into the string five point zero. Good. Uh, you can also call it cast, I guess, but it's technically not. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Well, what's the difference between what? So it's like the difference between like when you uh, type in like type string then the uh, number, but it's like I thought string was also where it's like you're in quotes and you uh, put the number five. Yeah. So like, what was the difference? Was that it's the same thing, just in two different ways? Yeah, uh, I think I got your question wrong, but like I'll explain it first. So if we have like five plus one, if they are both string, because they are like the actual letter, actual word we're trying to speak. So it's gonna, if I say five first and say one, we're, I'm saying five one, that's like a way to explain it. So it's gonna give us like five one as strings. But if we do like, if we treat them as integers, so because at this time there are actual numbers and it's gonna give us six. And here six is an integer, but like the five one before is still a string. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And as for the stir thing, if we say like a equals to uh, one. So if, oh no, yeah. So if we do a equals one, so if we want to cast A into a string, we cannot really use a quotation mark right here, right? So if we use quotation mark here, there's no way to put the variable A inside it. But instead, we can use like stir A. It's gonna give us this one string. Yes, makes sense, yeah. All right, uh, so string and variable. It's like kind of trivial. If we do like A, it's like a data. It's like the actual string thing. But like if we do, if we use an A, it's gonna be like the container, the variable that we are using. And uh, so that's. Yeah, I, I said I'm, we're going back to the array. Now is the time. So array is a really important thing because it like stores a bunch of data together. That's like the actual way you can like do some repetitive stuff in coding. So so there's a way to iterate each data inside an array, and that's how you can do things faster and like save your time. So first we're gonna assign an array into a variable. Say one, two, three, four. Yeah, uh, instead I'm using ABCD, I think it's less confusing. And uh, so the way we are indexing the data inside the array is to use this syntax. So if I want to access the first data inside the array, we're gonna use like, so basically like the thing in, inside the bracket is the index of the, like which data in the array you wanna access. If we do a zero, so everything in array starts with zero. Here's that's like how scientists talk. So it's gonna give us a. 
that's like the first the thing inside the array. If we do one, it's gonna be the second thing in the array. And if we do like two, it's C. And if we do three, it's D. And because the length of our array right now is four, if I'm trying to access the fifth data of the array, the Python will give us some like error. Like if we do the four, it's gonna give us an index error. It's like out of the range of the array. And there are like other ways to access data in the array. So if we do negative one, it's gonna be the last data inside the array. And if we do negative two, it's like the second to the last. It's like the same thing. And they are like, so if we do one, some sort of mark two, it's gonna access the like one, two, that. No, I think it's one, two, two minus one. So it's still gonna give us back just one data. It's like the B. And if we do one, three, it's B and C. Yeah, cool. And uh, another thing is that if we want to like put two arrays together, we can do like A plus A. And uh, so basically this operate plus, if you are using that between two arrays, it's gonna like uh, put two arrays together, like conjoin them. So it's like A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. Uh, Oh yeah, and also if we do a plus equals to something like this, you are gonna add another data inside the array at the very end. Uh, yeah, so you can put different types of data inside one array. That's just how Python do it. Like lots of, most of the computer languages that don't support that, but like Maya do. And um, uh, no, not my do Python do. Uh, let me see what else. Yeah, if you want to change one index, like one data in the array, you can just uh, use the same thing. If if I want to change the first data inside the array A, I just uh, use A zero equals to one. So right now, A the first data inside A is not going to be A anymore. It's going to be the. It's going to be one. All right, so let's do some like condition. A uh, condition is like your, it's a syntax. It's like you are saying, you're talking to the computer, say like, if it is true, do this. If it is not true, do that. So the syntax is like this, you, you are using if. It's called if statement as well. If a, so we can have like a equals to one, b equals to two, and then like we say if a equals to b, and you use like a two dots at the end of the if statement, and then in in the la next line you are like you have four spaces before the thing you are gonna put inside the if statement. Or you can just use one tab. But it's basically the same thing. And uh, if A, you do like C equals to You are gonna assign a new variable in the C. We say like C equals to five. And uh, else C equals to four. So it's really obvious what it's actually doing is like, so if we're saying that if A and B of the same value, we're gonna let C equals to five, but if not, we're gonna let C equals to four. And uh, if we run this code and we do, we're asking whether what the value of C is. 
C is 4 because here we have like A and B does not equal to each other. But like right here, if we change A to 2 now, A and B equals to each other. So at this time, C should be equal to 5. And we see, let's take a look if that's true. And let's print C again. So this time C equals to 5. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so here's the important thing, loop. Uh, so loop and the array basically like work together for you to like do repetitive things just using two lines of code. So like loop, condition, and the array, all those three things together can save you lots of time. So there are two types of loop. One is called for loop and another called while loop. But basically two things can like you can basically use one thing instead of another. They're like totally exchangeable. And uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna go over the for loop first and the while loop because it's basically the similar idea, but I hardly use it. So I'm not, I don't think it's that useful. Like people, different people have different preferences, I guess, for, so first we're gonna have an array So we have A. Uh, for so the syntax is like this. It's similar to if for I in A. And uh, everything you want to put inside the for loop, you're gonna use like four spaces after that. We can do like print, uh, no. We can do print i. So what it is doing that is that we are iterating through the array a three times. The first time i, i is like the, the data every time you are iterating through the loop. So the first is going over, i is four. The second time is going through the loop, i is 5. And the third time is going to be 2. Uh, we can take a look at what it's doing. So here, what I'm doing is that I want, every time I'm going into this loop, I want to print the thing I'm iterating on. So basically, it's just a printing 4, 5, 2 one after another. Like every time it's looping, it's just a print i. Does that make sense to you? Yeah? Yeah, okay. And uh, we can do something else. We can do like print i plus one. So it's gonna print like every time it's going through it, it's just a, the first time it's gonna print four plus one. The second time it's five plus one. Mm. And uh, we can, we can, to use the for loop to add like a sequence of number together. Say if I have like one from 10 and I want to calculate the summation of all of them, I can use a for loop to do that. So I have a equals four, five, two. And first I'm gonna have a clean, clean variable. Like, because if there's no nothing at being added on, it's gonna be zero, right? And every time we can do like, C equals to C plus I. Uh, so every time we're like adding I to the C for one time. And in the end, we can print C. So basically what it's doing is just like, the first time it's going through the loop is zero plus four. And after the first time, C is gonna be four. And the second time it's going through the loop, it's gonna be four plus five. So this time C is nine. And then it's like nine plus two. So it's gonna be 11. And uh, to make things more clear, we can like print C each time we're going through the loop. So the first time is four, second time is nine, the third time is 11. Does that make sense to you guys? Very cool. And uh, so you can, it's kind of obvious 
at this point, how they think can save lots of time. Because like every time we are going through a loop, we can, we're doing the same thing over and over again. So if I, so I can do a quick demo for you guys. So, so the Python command to create a sphere. Say if we want to create a string, yeah. What is a minus index? Yeah, so, so, so my, so remember I was mentioning like every time, so in, in the Maya, like every action you are having can be translated into one line of mail code, and the one line of mail code can be translated into like a corresponding Python code. So like, so Python is like an independent stuff from Maya, and how Maya and Python work together is that like Maya develops some kind of library that can use like, so they have like bunch of functions they already wrote for you, and you can just use them directly from Maya. And the, the way you're doing that, you're importing the Maya.commands as commands right here. So commands, uh, Maya.commands is like a library with whole bunch of functions together. So this line of code, commands.create node, is that, so it's creating a joint. It's creating a node, the node is joint. And uh, so if you want to create a joint, like three joints, before you have to like create three joints one by one. But right now, if you have a for loop, you can create like three joints with just the two lines of code. So you can see like right now we have three, jo three joints. And if you want to put them like into different places, You can just uh, use like another, yeah, right now I'm just uh, showing like how this whole thing is gonna work for you guys, but you do not need to actually understand like what each code is doing. So right now you can see like those three drawings are at different places. So so that can, if you think about it, and if you can do it like in a really complicated way, it can save lots of time. Say if you have like 100 drawings or 100 transform nodes, and uh, you do not need to like repetitively like click on the button like every time you you even need to change the name, change the name for each of them. But right now you do not actually have to do that. Um, yeah. So. But it's still it's still painful if you have like a if you want to use for loop and if you do not have like a array with like so if you want to have a array with like the length one hundred so you still need to like put one two three four manually into the array but like with this line of code you do not actually need to do that so it's called range so what it's doing is gonna create a, a array for you with the length you are putting in this function. So if I have range 100, so this thing is gonna be like an array from zero to 99. It's gonna be like an array of the length 100 starting from zero. And you can do like some other stuff like five. Uh, 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 code comma yeah yeah comma and 100 it's going to be like from one to, from 5 to 99 yeah it's starting from 5 and it stops at 99 so like if we want to do like 100 things like what we were doing before like if what if i want to create 100 joints i'm going to do like this time i'm going to do like range 100 you can see they are like 100 joints right here, right? And so another thing is that there's like, a, 
equal function and not equal function, like a function, a thing that have the equal capability S range is called X range. Uh, what I usually use is X range because X range like is made especially for for loop. And because for loop, if you use a range for it, it's gonna like say if you have a range of the like one million or something, it's gonna allocate the, the, the space inside of your machine of like one million numbers. It's gonna do that actually. And uh, if you have, it's not gonna happen, I think. But if you do have that kind of like large, large bunch of data it's gonna like probably my is gonna like stuck or like your machine is not gonna work something like that due to the memory issues but if you use x range because what x range is doing that is that every time it's going through the for loop it's gonna just equate that number for you just like the first time you were going through the loop it's just gonna assign the one to you the second time it's gonna assign the two to you it's gonna not it's not gonna allocate like one million data altogether just to put that in front of you and uh, so if you are using range for for loop use x range yeah everything works the same otherwise yeah computer science stuff yeah and uh, so now let's talk about functions and uh, I was mentioning that like my commands is just uh, like a library of all the functions that my created for you that you can use in inside the Python. And also like you also have the capability of writing your own functions. The function is like a um, bunch of commands, bunch of code you're gonna use. You can put those codes together and you can call the function once or twice or three the third time like you can use the same chunk of code over and over again and the, the so the, the the syntax for function is like this you are defining the function so def is representing define so def plus uh let's do multiply So here we are defining a function called multiply. Uh, called multiply. What it's doing is just multiplying two things together. Uh, so this is the func the name of the function. So like later on, if we want to call this function again, we're just uh, gonna call the multiply. And the a and the b are the numbers we're gonna give this function. Like later on when I'm going to call this function. Like, for example, if I run this code, it's going to define the multiply function for me. And every time, if I want to call it, I just do multiply. It's going to give me three because a, so right here, a is one and the three is b. And it's going to give me like a times b. So it's 1.3, it's three. And if we do five and uh, eight, it's gonna, be, it's gonna give me 40. It looks stupid here, but if we think about it, we can do like something much more fancy like, uh, We can do like a plus b. We can assign new variable inside a function. Like basically, whatever we can do outside of function, we can do those things inside of function as well. Let's do c equals a plus b, and c equals c times c, and let's do like c plus one hundred. C equals c plus one hundred, and let's do like. Let's do D equals to like C times times A. And finally, we're going to return D. 
if we like run this chunk of code, we are defining this cog function for us. And every time I want to, if I want to do like the same process again, I just need to call the cog function. Like if I, this time I do cog five and uh, 100, it's going to give me some like large number. And another thing about convenient about function is that we can change the variable we're giving to the function each time we're calling it. And next time we can probably do six and 11 is like two, three, three, four. So it's how it's going to be useful. Like how it's going to be useful inside my is that like if we want to create like a bunch of joints and each time we're going to like the first time I want to call them like shoulder. But the second time, if I want to call them, like give them a prefix of legs, we can just uh, change the variable inside the function, right? Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Uh, you can ask me questions anytime. Uh, let me see what else. So there are other data types like struct. Like if you were getting higher level in the programming, you're probably like doing some object oriented oriented programming. And then you're gonna use a struct. Struct is like, you are putting like a bunch of variables inside of one thing, and you can put some functions inside that struct. And it's like called method, but it's, I mean, basically you can do whatever you want without struct, but it's just a, like a way you are treating code as human beings, as like actual objects. It's just a easier for you to think about it. And the library, library is just a, like, a, Every time if you have a code file and you have a bunch of variables and like the, the functions together inside that code. And what you do is that you put the code you want to run and the code you were having before with those functions in the same directory or like maybe in another directory, but you have to access them correctly. And every time if you import that, like another code file, the code file is going to be like a library for you. You can use like the functions in inside another code file for you to, for the later use. And uh, so one example is the Maya commands that I showed before. Another is uh, math. So math is another like predefined li library you can use. It's really convenient. So like math. Yeah, so like math is a library with a bunch of mathematical functions and you, it has sign and like probably exponential or like some other things. You can look up at those in the internet every time. If you find something that's not provided inside Maya, if it's mathematical, it's either in the math or it's inside the, another is called like linear algebra or something like that. It's, yeah, there are like other, if you have something that you think other people already done, for you, you can just look up them on the internet and see like whether they are like a bunch of functions that's already do those things for you. You can just import them. You can download the code and import them and you do not need to write your own. And I do not need to, I do not know how to write a sign function my own, but it has it, it, has it there for you. So it's convenient. Uh, so Python in my eye, just, uh, it saves time and do the math for you. Uh, Mal and Python, if you know Mal, Mal before. So I don't really like Mal because the syntax of it is weird. It's only like valid inside Maya, nowhere else. But if you learn Python, you can use Python in Unreal, in Unity, uh, probably not Unity, I'm not sure. Like in, in, yeah, in Unity as well. And also in Houdini, like basically because Python is really easy for human beings to read. And is though it's slow, but just because it's easy to read. So basically everybody, if they're not doing some super complicated stuff that need to like save lots of time, they just use Python all the time. Uh, yeah, but if you like Mal, like Mal has everything for you as well. It has for loop, it has function, it has condition. You just need to like look up those, the syntax of those and translate back and forth. So it's called 
programming language, and they are like actually just a la like language. You need to translate one from one to another. And uh, yeah. So like that's basically like everything I'm going over for you guys, like all the concept stuff. Do you guys have any question you can ask me now? No? And then, Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I plan to do. Yeah. Uh, so if you, got, you guys do not have questions, I'll do some like demo for you, like how to actually use this kind of stuff in the Maya. And um, like, are you guys riggers or mallers or lighters or mauler? Uh, you're a rigger. Okay. Other people also rigging. Okay. Uh, I'll probably do something like rigging for you guys first. And then I can do some like thing that can save you time for model, maybe for modeling. Uh, cool. Um, so I already create a bunch of joints here. Uh, do you guys know like every time you have a control, you have have a, like a transform node. Uh, that's the parent of the control, right? So how do you guys usually do that? You use like the comments or to make a make a like make a reference that's called, so every time you have a control you need to zero out all the values in the on the control right use a tran, use a like transform node that parenting under it uh, uh, i mean you have the control being parented under that transform node how do you guys usually do that you do you use yeah 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 you just group it and uh, put them at the same place is that how to do that do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe I, I'm not being clear. Yeah. So actually, so like, so say this is our controller. And we put it right here. And let's pretend it's like a control for ARM. So the value on it is not clean right now. It has like transform uh, translations and rotation on it. So if you, so if, in order to clean it up, you have to like put that under another transform node. So to clean up all the crafts that's on it already. You guys know that, right? Yeah. So how, how do you usually do that? Do you usually like group one thing manually uh, or? So if we use code, we can just uh, like every time we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, okay. So, uh, actually, so we can we can use code to create a bunch of like uh, circles for us. So this commands is the uh, is equivalent to we are creating a circle right here. So we if we hit this button, you can see like there's a mail code called circle and it's create so my action right here to click that button is translated into mail into this code, circle, like a bunch of stuff. And uh, this mail code is creating that circle for me inside of Maya scene. So the equivalent in the Python is that commands the circle. So you can see it's also creating a circle for us. But because I do not have the parameter later, if I like use the same parameter inside this Python function, I'm gonna create the same same circle as that one, but I didn't, so it's just a, doesn't really matter. So like for in X range 100, 
every time I'm going to create a circle. So, so all the names in the Maya are strings, like all the objects or all the transform nodes or, or the, all the utility nodes, their names are considered as strings in Python. If you want to access something inside the Maya scene and uh, you want to call it in the Python, uh, in Python, you, you're going to use strings as a name of that thing. Like, let me give you an example. So there is a command called rename. If I want to rename the nerve circle one, so because the name of it is nerve circle one, so if I want to call it inside the Python, I need to use the string nerve circle one. And I want to rename it as something else, like say, a circle, it's going to do that. Did you see what happened on the screen? So also like if I have a utility node, say like plus minus average, and I want to rename that thing. So then we're going to also, we're going to use the name of this utility node is also string. It's like the same concept. And we're going to rename that a circle as well. But I don't think we can do that. Uh, let's call it circle one. And you see the name of it is changed to circle one. Does that make sense to you guys? And OK. Uh, So every time, so because it's a function, every function is returning a value to you. So before, if we do not, uh, I forgot. Uh, so the function is returning you a value because you are calling it, you are expecting something from that function and it's, it's going to return you a value. But if you do not have a return thing for you, it's going to return none to you automatically. None is not true, it's not false, it's not like any number or integer, it's like a, just a none. It literally means none, like nothing. And uh, so every time I'm calling a function, command circle, it's going to return you the name that the circle you are creating, for example, if we do print Oh no, actually no. It's it's giving you uh, an array with the uh, nodes you are creating. So one is nerve circle 1, the second is make nerve circle 2. It's it's, it's just a crap, and you can just, act, if you want to access the name of the circle you just created, you can just, uh, because it's the first data in the array, so you can just uh, use the index zero to access it, and it's going to give you a, so it give you nervous circle two, because this time our circle name is nervous circle two, and does that make sense? Right, makes sense, yeah, cool. Um, so every time, so commands that circle, and we're so right now we're assigning the name of the circle to this variable cir, sir. So we can print sir. It's gonna be like and then we can rename that as. Because we are creating controls for the arm, we can give a prefix arm plus stir i. So it's gonna create four controls for us. And the name of each control is gonna be arm one, arm two, no, no, arm zero, arm one, arm two, and arm three. And we can put them into different places. So the, the way you are putting something like 
you are moving something in a Maya scene, there are like a bunch of ways to do that. So the first way you can do it is you can use a function set attribute. You guys know like each node of a uh, each node has some like attributes, right? So it has like trans if it's a transform node, it has like translate, it has rotate, it has scale. If it's like plus a uh, plus uh, uh, minus average, it has like the input one, input two, and the output. So because everything in Python, no, everything in Maya in in, in the Python of Maya is mostly a string. If you want to access something that's in your Maya thing, you probably need to use string. So how you can access an attribute of a node is that you're also using string. So after the name of your node, you have a dot after it. And after the dot, you have the attribute name of it. So this, so basically this line of code is gonna set the, set the, the translate x to five of, for the number circle one. Uh, it moves to the five. Does that make sense to you guys? So the, so because if you see the translate here, the name of it is like T is like uppercase and there is like a space between the translate and X. So it's really hard to, for people to actually know what the name of attribute you should use in the Python. And the way you can easily visualize that is that, uh, So if you say, I want to know the name of rotate X, I want to use the rotate X of this node in Python, and I just change it to three. And you can see there's like corresponding mail code for you. We call set attributes of this thing to three. And uh, basically that's just gonna be the attribute you're gonna use inside of Maya. Oh no, inside Python. And uh, there are like more complicated stuff like because if we like put that in the node editor, we can see there are like lots of attributes that's not shown, that are not shown in, in the channel box. And you can, if you want to know the values of those, basically like the convention, I think mostly it just, uh, every time you have a space, you just uh, like connect them together, like get the space out. And then like the first letter is always lowercase and every time you have like two word, different words together and the second word, so the first letter of the second word is gonna be like uppercase. That's mostly the convention, but sometimes it's not. Then you can just uh, like say if it's a number, you can just uh, connect, connect them. And see you are connecting this attribute to this attribute. It's another way for you to know what the name of the attribute is. It's handy, uh, it's still there, but um, let's see. What else, what else? Uh. All right. Uh, So see, we are creating four circles and uh, arm zero, arm one, arm two, and arm three. So we're gonna use them as like the fake controls. We're gonna have the parent transform node onto them. And uh, 
So it's already, you can already see how it's convenient because I'm creating like four circles and they are automatically renamed. What we can do is that, so there's another my commands function I use all the time. It's really convenient is that, so commands the list. So basically it's gonna list everything depends on the parameter list a bunch of stuff it's gonna put a bunch of stuff inside the list and it's gonna return you return you that list depends on what parameter you are giving this function so if I give the if I set selection equals true I mean this thing is called flag You can see it's giving me like arm three, arm two, arm one, and arm zero. Because I set the flag of selection as true, it's just uh, giving me everything I'm selected and it's putting all of them inside into a list. And we can like access. So all of those names are strings. And every time, because it's in an array, we can loop through them. We can iterate through them. So we can put this list into another variable. Let's call it control list for i in uh, So here's a function for array. If I want to know the length of the array, where you I use this function len. So it's gonna give me three, the number three, the integer three, uh, because uh, there are like three elements inside this array. So what I'm doing here is that the length of the controller is four. And uh, so it's basically doing for i in x range four. So the first time it's going through the list i is going to be zero, the second time i is going to be one, the third time i is going to be two, like extra, extra, etc, etc. Yeah, uh, whatever. Uh, command start. Uh, uh, so where? So for each of those control, we need to create a transform node for it. So we are just uh, using this command of like create a node. The argument you are giving it is the type of the node you are creating. Like the I used this function before and I use the uh, argument as joins. So each time I'm gonna create a join. This time I'm gonna create a transform node. And uh, we can If you run through it, we're gonna create four transform nodes, and each of them is called is auto automatically renamed as a as a as a control and a like slash ref. So it's already doing it's already doing that. Uh, and the next thing we need to do is that we should put each transform node at the same position as that control. So other than set attribute, there's another command you can use to move the things and the query for the position of things is called xform. So we're xform the So what S form is doing for us is that we are querying for the position of the control in the 3D space. 
So if we have the query flag set to true, it's gonna return the position of the thing we're asking for. But if we set the query flag to false, it's gonna set the position of the thing we are putting in this function to wherever we're it's hard to say. Uh, so query is basically like you're asking where that is. And if you set query for false, you are just putting that thing to the place you are giving it. And the word space is this flag. Is that you are asking for the word space position of the thing you are asking for. Because say if you have like object A being parented under object B, if you do not have the word space flag set to true, the value it's gonna give you is a relative position of the object, is the position of, of object, object A relative to object B. But if you set the word space flag to true, it's gonna give you like the the, the position of object A relative to the word position, like zero, zero, zero. So it's like neglecting whatever you are parenting onto that thing. So matrix equals true is just a So everything in a 3D space can be the position of it can be represented as a, like four by four matrix. It's like four numbers by four numbers. If you like do not have the matrix set to true, you need to like query for the translate and then query for the rotate and then query for the scale. But if you set it to matrix, it's gonna store like the translate, rotate and scale information all together into a matrix. And you're querying for that information. And if you wanna set the position of the object you are setting, you can just uh, set the matrix flag, matrix flag instead of using three lines of code of like each rotate, scale, and uh, translate. And then we're put that thing. Every time you see some bugs happen, you just go to the my reference page and see what, what's going wrong with you. Like basically this page have like everything, all the my functions you are gonna need. Oh no, not here. Uh,
Uh, it's a stupid mistake. Yeah. All right. Uh. So if you take a look at it, so each reference is at the same position of the control. So before I, I just made some like some mistakes that doesn't even make sense. But I mean like here you are because you are querying for the position of the matrix, and uh, not the position of the matrix, the position as a matrix, you're putting that position, you're transform that translate. Uh, transform node to the place you are current you were currying before. So the next step, we're so we already have the transform nodes at, at the same position at the control. The next step is going to be just a par parent that control under that transform node, and there's another commands of doing that. So it's called parent. It basically just a parent one thing under another. The first is gonna be the child. The first argument is the child. The second argument is parent. So you can see like we're parenting like. We're parenting each control under the under a reference node. That's at the same position of that trans, at that control, and all the values on the control are clean. And zero out to zero. Yeah, does that make sense? What I was doing. Do you have any questions about that? No. Okay. And what you can do, you can store this chunk of code into a function, and every time you want to use it, you can just call the function. All right, uh, what else? So as, as for, uh, yeah, uh, all right. Uh, so do, do, are we still going through something for modeling? No? Uh, that's 14, we have 15 minutes left. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Thank you so much for